Yeah, what's good, people? I hope you guys are staying cool and calm in this weather because, damn, it's hot as hell outside, man. It's hot as hell's kitchen outside. But in the transfer market, that's where we really want to focus. Right now, PSG are ramping up a £40 million bid for Gwendouzi. And look, Gwendouzi, mix, bag mixed reviews on him on Sunday when we did the player ratings. Quite a few players, actually, but he was the one that really stood out. A lot of you guys were giving him four, and I'm not really sure whether that was a reflection of the fact that he... And it was a point of discussion on Sunday with me and Bertram and Tony and Ebony. It was really a point of reflection of did he let himself down or did he let the team down or did he let the manager down when he himself thought that he was fighting for what he felt was right. He was sticking up for a teammate in his eyes. That's the type of team that he wants to be a part of. And when the team tells him, no, you're not supposed to fight and stick up for your teammates, it just doesn't go with Guendouzi's ethics. And it doesn't match Arteta's ethics as well. Arteta wants to leave everything off the pitch and be professional at all times. And that's something that the two couldn't agree on. The relationship is done. It's dead. It's not going to be repaired. And I'd be very surprised if he's still on the market. He's one of the few players with actually any market value. So I think selling him would be wise. I'm a big Guendouzi fan. Love the player. Um, again, four Man of the Match awards in our first seven games. That's how dominant that he was in our midfield. I did a video which I uploaded up on Sunny's. I put it as well in the description. I'll put it in this description as well below if you haven't seen it. And it was comparing after the first month all of our midfielders and Guendouzi came out top and so did Ceballos. And um, losing somebody like that, in fact losing Ceballos and losing Guendouzi have literally left us with nothing. And, um, you know, statistically, we know where Xhaka is in the league. But we're just losing all of that ability to, to clog up the lanes, make tackles, win duels, um, and the passing accuracy and, and chances created. We're losing all of that with those two players, with Ceballos and Guendouzi, and we have to basically replace them. So um, with a PSG come up with the 40 million is another thing because this devalued market that we're living in right now really is not show this ugly head. We haven't really seen any deals stick themselves out of the table to say that this player who was worth 80 million is now only worth 40 or 30. Yeah, we've seen some rhetoric with Zaha, but Zaha was never worth 80 million in the first place. Zaha was always worth about 40 million. So the fact that Palace are now saying they want 30 million for him and he's talking about you know, pointing to the sign at the nightclub that says Zaha to Arsenal and all that stuff. Look, we got too many wingers and we don't really need him. Speaking of that, though, there's talk of William actually coming into the middle of the park and sitting behind that number 10 role and being a facilitator there. I've got no problem with that because uh, you remember, remember, guys, he's seventh in the premiership in terms of chances created. He really is a top class player. And I think there's one thing you have to do. You've got to think about a 32 years old. Where is he going to best be suited? On the wings, where he's using his pace and his skill. In the middle, where he's using his ability to set up play and create chances and his intelligence. I think when you look at the, the fact that he's 32 and it's in the latter part of his career, and you're, you're asked to do less things as far as running goes in that position, then I think that putting him into the middle of, middle of the park is a smart idea um, because then you can facilitate Martinelli and Saka on the left and then you can just put a bang in the middle or just keep a bang in a Bamian on the left. It's whatever you really want to do as far as Arteta goes. It'd be interesting to see how they reshape the team because last season was square pegs and round holes. And now Arteta has had an off-season. He's got more of an ability to kind of shape the team to his needs. We are also um, hearing more things about Aaron Ramsey. Aaron Ramsey, obviously, Perlo's taken over as manager and he's not in his plans. Although it's fair to say when you're on 400 grand a week, you're probably not in anybody's plans because you're just sucking up too much of the, the, the money and the wages but then he's very difficult to shift because who actually can afford to pay 400 grand a week on a player who's 29 years old in the twilight of his career? I really don't know how that works out. For me, he stays at Juventus um, because would you leave there if they're paying you 400 grand a week? I know I wouldn't.
yeah i don't really care about anything else you you signed you made me so you offered me the deal i signed the contract it's on you bro yeah also guys arsenal are going to be set to play friendlies behind closed doors after the community shield against liverpool so that's a good update that way arteta will be able to meet up with his players work on squad tactics and um, he'll be able to to bind and make some synergy of those new players that he would have brought in at that time as well so I think it's pretty good. Speaking of William as well, William's having his medical at Arsenal today. So I'm, I'm actually on my way down London, Coney, to see if I can sniff out any any news or anything that's been going on there. As as I said before, the problem with the team is in the midfield. Forget every, anywhere else. Forget goals. Forget the defenders and centre-backs, which we've got nine. The problem is that we are losing, losing the battle in the midfield. The fact that Ceballos is gone, Guendouz is going to be sold, Torreira wants out, we're left with next to nothing outside of Xhaka as a holding midfielder, we, we, we've got nothing else there and I think this is a time for you to make Torreira shine, of course, I definitely agree with that, but at the same time bring in somebody who's able to kind of be a top class player in that position and right now I would be talking to Watford about Decor simply because he's going to be someone who's not going to cost that much He's, but he's going to do a hell of a job in that midfield as far as asking him to win duels, be a ball winner, take care of uh, possessional football and things like that. But to, again, Thomas Party, William being shoved in there. Um, I would still like to see what Zach, Saka looks like there as well. As you know, Saka's played all over the place <laughs> when we were doing his player ratings on the weekend. We were talking about that. But the fact that he did look comfortable and then played the last few games, actually, in a central midfield position, I'd still want to have a look at him there and see if he can develop into that role. Um, he can do anything for you. He can shoot. He can run through. He can tackle. He can create. He can score. So uh, I, I would really like to, to give him a look there and then obviously at the same time see what Smith Rowe can do in the midfield. And lots of options there. Um, Willock still has to develop there as well, but we need a proven winner. We need a proven player at that level who can step up and really help the team dominate the midfield because that's where we are our most weakness and uh, really looking forward to seeing what can happen there. And there's obviously more news about Ozil. Don't pay any, any attention to that. Again, it's like Aaron Ramsey. Arsenal, you were the ones that offered Ozil 18 million a year. Not, not Ozil. Ozil didn't do that. Ozil just signed the paper. So you, people blaming him and saying, get out of our club and doing all of this stuff. Again, strange marks for Ozil and the Player of the Year award when he actually led the team in chances creators, people were still chastising him. And it just goes to show you the level of imbalance towards fans' views and fans' opinions and where we are. Just because a player's hated for getting paid a lot of money doesn't mean he's a bad player. Just because a player didn't turn up in shape, that should be on the player. So there's certain things that we can look at and say, yes, it's your fault, or no, it's not your fault. But at the end of the day, if Arsenal offer him the 18 million and then, you know, we lose everything and gain nothing. Whereas if you offered to pay half of his salary, then you at least save nine million in the last year of his contract. And you, for me, you have to look at every single avenue before you make a decision to pay a player off. Because at some point, teams are going to be desperate. If you can get a player like Ozil and play him 175 grand a week, then that's decent money. He's still 31 years old. So it's not like he's in his twilight years. He's 34, 35. He'll still give you two, three, four years of good football. And um, it just really depends on what league you, you want to play in and what type of football you want to play. Um, if it's that high pressing, win the ball, hunting style, that he's probably not your man for it. But for somewhere in the Turkish league and, and, and even in the Bundesliga, it still stands to reason that he can do a job there. So look, we'll just have to be patient. If you make rash decisions in this transfer market, it could cost you millions. And I think that's where the team is right now. But that's it from me, guys. Like and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you guys Wednesday on the podcast. Peace out, man. Nice one. Right back at you.